How's it going? Hope you're doing really great. Um, this is going to be a really quick tutorial on how to export a mix to a QuickTime or how to bounce your Pro Tools session to a QuickTime. So um, let's say you've already got your movie or your QuickTime imported and you've finished your session and uh, everything sounds perfect and now you want to export a QuickTime to send to your client or to watch or to render. All you're going to do is you're going to go up here to File, you're going to go to Bounce to QuickTime. You're going to click on that and uh, you're going to want to make sure that your bounce source is what you're listening out of. Um, so what's kind of cool about this, the, the newer versions of Pro Tools is if you have stems, you can actually um, bounce those at the same time. Like I've got, you know, I can bounce out my effects and my um, my music and as well as my main mix all at the same time, which can save a lot of time, especially if you're, you know, you've got a half hour, an hour long show um, and you've got music and effects or you've got tons of music stems. Um, this can really speed up that workflow. So that's what these plus and minuses are. These are all different bounce sources. So, um, like if I go to my bus, see I've got my music, I've got my effects, um, and I can bounce those all out. So, right now we're just going to stick with the stereo bounce. You're going to want to pick what type of file, and I would recommend Wave. Broadcast Wave is the standard. Um, and interleaved is what you're going to most likely use. Uh, you're going to want to choose your bit depth. Um, usually 24-bit or 16-bit are the standard. I think now most most systems can handle the 24-bit, so I go with that. And 48 hertz tends to be the standard uh, uh, sample rate, but you can go higher if your project requires that. And you're going to want to include the video and <laughs> because that's the whole point. Um, clicking same as source means that you're not going to change the settings of the QuickTime. You're going to bounce it exactly as you got it. Now if you do want to change that, you're going to unclick the same as source. You're going to go into QuickTime settings and you can change you know, your compression settings, you can change your, your sound, uh, you can tweak this to be, you know, if you want a smaller file size, for instance, that you want to email, you can, you can do this. Um, another trick is what I tend to do is I will bounce something out um, as, you know, same as source. And then if I want to make it a smaller file size, I'll just go through QuickTime itself outside of Pro Tools and I'll bounce it as like a M4V or as like a iPhone format or an Apple TV format. And that'll give you the compression settings you want without really losing quality. Um, you're going to want to replace the timecode track, um, or you may not, but basically replacing the timecode track is going to um, use whatever timecode settings you have in your session and put that into the video. Um, so you don't have to replace it. It's not going to really hurt anything if you, if you don't. Um, then here's your file name. So you're going to want to name it, you know, however you want to name it. And then you choose your directory of where you want to bounce it to. And this offline means that most of the time, uh, if your computer's pretty fast, it will bounce out everything faster than real time. So if you have a, a if your piece is 30 minutes, most likely it'll probably be done in about 15 minutes uh, or, or just quicker. But if you want to listen to your bounce in real time, you're going to want to uncheck this offline. Then you hit bounce, and it should go ahead and render everything out as a quick time. And that's all there is to it, folks. I uh, hope that was helpful to you. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. And if this was helpful to you, if you enjoyed it, feel free to like and subscribe and share. And as always, have an awesome one wherever you are. Catch you on the next one. Take care.